Road Network and Destinations, let's begin. In this session, we are going to discuss how a road network and the related destination locations are defined in LifeSim and talk about key points for what makes a well-represented road network with destinations. We'll also talk about some tips for reviewing and editing the road network and destination information and common issues that we see in the CFCC system is essentially used to assign a three-character code to features within GEO datasets. Each code is made up of an uppercase letter followed up by two digits, and in our case, the code is defining each type of road within our road network. The first character, the letter A in this case, denotes that the feature is a road. The second character denotes the road type, for example, whether it's a primary highway, local neighborhood road, driveway, and so on, and the third character further classifies within the road type. So for example, is it an underpass, in a tunnel, on a bridge? Each CFCC code also has corresponding attributes that further define the data, which we will go over on the next slide, such as number of lanes, two lane versus four lane, and so on. Free flow speed, speed that occurs when no congestion or adverse conditions, jam density, Number of vehicles that can fit on a road segment per mile when traffic stops. Breakaway density. Breakpoint density density, where adding further vehicles to the road will impact the speed of other vehicles on the road stop and go speed. Speed vehicles can travel when in a traffic jam or traveling on a wet road green shields power term, defines the functional speed density relationship between breakaway density and stop and go speed, for example. As the density increases on a road, the speed vehicles can travel decreases. Road networks can be saved as polyline shapefiles. It can be imported from a shapefile or from OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is a collaborative project to create a free editable map of the world. It is built by volunteers and has an open content license. This screenshot shows the next step to import. This screenshot shows the final step to import. This shows the difference in the road network with the 15,000 feet buffer displayed on the import from OSM slide. This shows the difference in the road network without the 15,000 feet buffer displayed on the import from OSM slide. Each road is also assigned attributes that affect transportation. Flow direction, whether roads are one-way or two-way. Vertical offset, designed for roads that are elevated above the ground, such as a bridge that would actually have water running under the road instead of on the road. Road networks can be saved as polyline shapefiles. It can be imported from a shapefile or from OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is a collaborative project to create a free editable map of the world. It is built by volunteers and has an open content license. This screenshot shows the next step to import. This screenshot shows the final step to import. This shows the difference in the road network with the 15,000 feet buffer displayed on the import from OSM slide. This table is editable. You can also add your own by right-clicking in the table and inserting a row or customize the already existing ones to create a row type unique to your dataset. Number of lanes, two lane versus four lane, and so on. Free flow speed, speed that occurs when no congestion or adverse conditions. Jam density, number of vehicles that can fit on a road segment per mile when traffic stops. Breakaway density, Breakpoint density density, where adding further vehicles to the road will impact the speed of other vehicles on the road. Stop and go speed. Speed vehicles can travel when in a traffic jam or traveling on a wet road. Green Shield's power term defines the functional speed density relationship between breakaway density and stop and go speed, for example. As the density increases on a road, the speed vehicles can travel decreases. The speed density function is shown at the top, and you can view the speed density function for any CFCC code by clicking in any one of the cells in the relative codes row.
The blue dotted line is the defined stop and go speed, and the green line is how the speed changes relative to the number of vehicles per lane on each mile long segment until you reach the jam density for that particular road and the corresponding stop and go speed. Flow direction and vertical offset are defined when you import a road network and can also be edited in the attribute table of the road network for each individual road. First animation is early on in an evacuation when people have just started receiving the warning so there is not many people on the road and vehicles are able to move at free flow speed to get where they need to go. Second animation is later in the evacuation after most people have been warned and breed point density has been surpassed. Vehicles are in bumper to bumper traffic in some areas and are therefore moving more slowly. Once you upload a road network, there may be some editing you want to do. Good news is that you do not need to make edits in ArcMap. You can make edits directly in the Map Layers tab, which will save a lot of time and avoid a scenario where you've made edits in ArcMap, but forgotten to import them back into LifeSim, or a scenario where you risk mixing up or corrupting files, importing and exporting from one to the other. As far as edits you may need to make, we wanted to highlight some of the more common issues we see in imported road networks and talk about solutions for fixing them. Road network dangles, line ends that do not share an endpoint with any other line. Use show dangles in map window to identify connectivity issues. Right click on your road network in the study tree and select show dangles in map window. As far as edits you may need to make, we wanted to highlight some of the more common issues we see in imported road networks and talk about solutions for fixing them. Road network dangles, line ends that do not share an endpoint with any other line. Use show dangles in map window to identify connectivity issues. Right click on your road network in the study tree and select show dangles in map window. To help identify one way roads and check for issues, Add your road network to the map window, right click on it, and select properties. Then check draw and arrow. One way segments will appear in red unless changed in properties and all other roads will appear in black. To help identify one way roads and check for issues, add your road network to the map window, right click on it, and select properties. Then check draw and arrow. One-way segments will appear in red unless changed in properties and all other roads will appear in black. To help identify one-way roads and check for issues, add your road network to the map window, right-click on it, and select Properties. Then check Draw and Arrow. One-way segments will appear in red unless changed in properties and all other roads will appear in black. In the first image, it looks like water is on the road, but in the second image, we can tell that this road is actually on a bridge going over a channel. Therefore, water would not normally be on the road, so we need to set a vertical offset to tell the model that this road is above the channel. Vertical offset based off center point of road. So for example, if the hydraulics tell us that the water depth is 10 feet in this channel, but we know the height of the center of the bridge is 40 feet above the underlying terrain, we can set the vertical offset to be 40 feet. As a result, we tell the model that the bridge is 30 feet above the maximum water depth, and therefore no water is actually on the bridge. In the first image, it looks like water is on the road, but in the second image, we can tell that this road is actually on a bridge going over a channel. Therefore, water would not normally be on the road, so we need to set a vertical offset to tell the model that this road is above the channel. Vertical offset based off center point of road. So for example, if the hydraulics tell us that the water depth is 10 feet in this channel, but we know the height of the center of the bridge is 40 feet above the underlying terrain, we can set the vertical offset to be 40 feet. As a result, we tell the model that the bridge is 30 feet above the maximum water depth, and therefore no water is actually on the bridge. This is no longer an issue with OpenStreetMap. 
Woody made updates last June, June 2019, that removed this issue. However, it could still be an issue in road networks not imported from OpenStreetMap and imported via shapefile. Local EMAs, emergency management agencies, can be a good resource to determine likely destinations that would be used during an emergency or places where they expect they direct people to evacuate to. This shows the number of destinations and locations, too many and too few. Here is a plot graph example of destinations and locations. These are example graphs for destinations and locations, for simulation results and cumulative evacuation outflow. These graphs show the cumulative destination outflow. Consider altering destinations so that you move two of them actually into the inundated area. Why might we do this? For the one we move into the urban area, we might do that because it is a resource center, such as a hospital or an evacuation center, such as a sporting events, superdome, where nonprofits are set up to help community members. For the one we move into the dry area, maybe the assumption is the terrain is such that the elevations here are higher or something of that nature. NN 143 North is the destination moved to the field. Memorial Hospital is destination moved to populated area. So we make this change, look at the results, and think we did a good job. But does it make sense to have people evacuate to the hospital? Can the parking lot reasonably accommodate everyone? Is there the ability to evacuate vertically? Does the hospital have the staff, space, or capacity to host so many people? Sometimes people assume hospitals, for example, are a safe place to be where they can get care, but that's not always the case. Five days at Memorial showcases this during Hurricane Katrina. Does it make sense to have people evacuate into a field? Are there any resources there? Have we put people into an area where they are cut off from getting outside resources? Would people even reasonably understand or know to go there? Take a look at slides 27 to 33 to see examples of what was just addressed on slide 26. The video will pause and play on each slide, allowing you to view the visual and information on the slide. You can turn on and off destinations for each EPZ. Some EPZs will be told to evacuate to one location, while another EPZ will be told to evacuate to another. You also be descriptive in naming each destination, makes it easier when viewing cumulative destination arrival plots and making assignments. The cumulative destination plot can help you determine which destinations are getting the most traffic and an idea of how quickly. Useful in determining if some destinations are not needed or if others may need to be placed differently or added. For each iteration, a vehicle is assigned a random number from 0 to 1. During an evacuation, that vehicle samples either the high or low clearance willingness to enter function based on the vehicle type. The corresponding depth defines the fording depth for that single vehicle through the simulation iteration. Each iteration will sample a new random variable for each vehicle. If the vehicle encounters a flooded road with depth greater than that vehicle's fording depth, it will attempt to turn around. 
If a one-way or flooded road is also blocking the road behind the vehicle, it may become stuck in that location and subject to the maximum hydraulic conditions. Fording depth is the max depth a vehicle is willing to ford a road, as defined by the willingness to enter flooded road functions. In the example above for iteration 1, the first group was sampled to be evacuating in a low-clearance vehicle, and their fording depth, or willingness to enter a flooded road, is 0 0.3. That means if the depth is above one-third of a foot, they will not attempt to drive through the water. However, the second evacuating group was sampled to be evacuating in a high-clearance vehicle, and they're willing to enter flooded roads as long as the depth is 1.5 feet or lower. Therefore, in the image, the green low-clearance vehicle will attempt to turn around or get stuck where they are, and the high-clearance red truck will attempt to drive through the water. If their vehicle stability threshold is surpassed, the truck will be caught in flooded waters. If the truck's vehicle stability threshold is not surpassed, then they may continue driving until they reach safety. Road Summary This table can tell you specific information about to roads themselves within your network, which is true across all iterations. Summary includes what type of road, CFCC, whether it is a one-way or not, if there is a vertical offset or not, the max depth and velocity, the arrival time of water to that road from simulation start, statistics about the exposed population on that road across all iterations, and statistics about the life loss across all iterations. Detailed output. You can look at one specific iteration at a time and find out all of the information associated with individual evacuating group from how many people Owen do 65 were in the vehicle to which structure they originated from to what final road they ended up on and whether and when they mobilized and took protective action, what point during the simulation they completed their evacuation, meaning they were either caught or out safely, if caught whether they ended up in a low or high hazard zone and the associated life loss, what type of vehicle they were in, their sampled fording depth, and sampled vehicle stability stability thresholds. Road details. Iteration specific can tell you similar information from road summary plus the number of people caught, number of groups caught, and life loss total for a specific road in that iteration. This is helpful for identifying particularly dangerous roads for people to travel on. Here is another example. Here is another example. This is an example of road and destination. Check on learning. Take time to answer the question. Check on learning. Take time to answer the question. Check on learning. Take time to answer the question.